Hey, smokers, Draga One here, and today the ultimate DOS machine rises again. Now, you're probably wondering, this doesn't look anything like the ultimate DOS machine. Well, that's right, and it shouldn't, because it only shares a single hardware component from its predecessor the Creative Aw64 sound card. But the real reason I'm still calling it the ultimate DOS machine is not only because it still runs DOS but because I managed to carry over all of the files and even the Windows installation from the failing hard drive of the previous build. That's right. Thanks to a random commenter's suggestion, I made an image of the drive as soon as I was able, and I managed to pull off almost everything and transfer it to the new build. But that's not even the cool part. It's where that data ended up that's freaking awesome. So let's take a look at the front. Taking a look at the front, we have a 1997 12x CD-ROM drive with volume control and headphone jack. A large gaping hole so you can put cool things inside. A 3.5 inch floppy disk drive. A finicky power button. Non-functioning LEDs. And a reset button. Okay, taking a look at the back here, I want you all to just calm down, take a few deep breaths. We have two PS2 ports, and everything below them is not going to be used. So don't even don't even look at that. We're not we're not going there. We're not even no no no. And especially don't look at those. Just those don't exist. Just no. Just for, this is a DOS build. I I promise. Okay, this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. Of course, we have our VGA port from a video card that can support. 1024 by 768 on Windows 3.1. Our Legend Returns, the R64 uh, sound card. Interesting addition, a composite and S video input, and an output. And the output's connected to the line in on the R64 uh, card. So, what's going on there, huh? Well, let's take a look inside and find out. So these are our PCI and ISA cards. Video cards right here. The AW64 sound cards right here, connected to the CD-ROM drive. Right here, we have a creative video spigot. That's right, an ISA Windows 3.1 capture card. Video production on this channel is being taken to the next level. And this really long guy on the bottom is something some of you might actually remember. And that is the DeckTalk PC card. That's right, we're integrating in our DeckTalk capabilities into this DOS machine build. So looking down from the top here, we actually have an Intel motherboard with a 450 megahertz Pentium 3. Now you're probably wondering, why on earth did you make a DOS machine with a Pentium 3? Well, I didn't really have any other choice. Uh, but at least we won't have any shortage of raw power. Uh, 32 megabytes of RAM because really don't need any more at this point. But in any case, that does explain the USB ports and stuff. Now you're probably wondering what this little guy is. It's a 100 watt power supply. I ripped it out of an old HP machine, and unfortunately, it's the only power supply that will properly fit into this case. And I have tested this thoroughly, and it is capable of providing power adequately to the system, so no need to worry. And last, but certainly not least, our medium of storage, which just so happens to be... A 128 gigabyte micro SD card! Yeah, we're gonna have a plenty of space for all those videos we're gonna record with the capture card. So let's go ahead and put an adapter within an adapter. And uh, get this baby started up. Alright, so let's go ahead and start this baby up. So there we have our 32 megs of RAM. USB we're not going to use, and it recognizes our SD card adapter. 
now it's going to run the auto exe c bat load in all of our sound drivers cd driver deck talk driver and dos midi driver and now we're at the prompt so at this point you probably have two questions a how and a why starting with a how are we using a 128 gigabyte micro SD card on DOS? And the truth of the matter is, we're not utilizing its full potential, obviously. So this is F disk, and we're going to take a look at the partition information. And as you can see, the original partition from the last build on the mechanical hard drive is 502 megabytes. Now, we have an extended DOS partition with a logical drive in it. And that only accounts to 2.4 gigabytes. So, where's the other 100-some that we're not using? Well, we can't. DOS wouldn't actually let me make an extended partition larger than 2.4 gigs. And since we're not going to even need that much space, we won't even worry about it. I tried making multiple primary partitions, but then the CD-ROM drive wouldn't work anymore. So I had to play by DOS's rules. So if we want to take a look at the extended partition, it just shows you that there's two gigs in that logical drive there, and drive D. And of course, the why? Why are we using a 128 gigabyte micro SD card on DOS? I'll let you figure that one out. So one of the most depressing things that ever happened to me was not getting Rayman working on the last video. Luckily though, I've straightened some things out, and uh, we're back where we should. So to get to all of our games and stuff, I, I'm putting more things on the extended partition where we have two gigabytes to work with. So now we're going to have the serious and real experience with CD Audio. And there you have it. Now I think we got this far last time. Uh, we've already seen it before played a little bit into the game already. Didn't get that far before, I don't think. Intro cinematic working. And we're actually on the map! Hello, hello! Skip right ahead to my favorite music in Bandland. There it is. The only thing I didn't like is that there was this asshole right at the beginning of the level. And In all honesty, I suck horribly at this game. Like, even playing it for years throughout my entire life, I haven't got that good at it. At least you can see it's it's working. It's working. Like the, the, the music is working. The sound effects are working. The gameplay is working. It's it's a dream. But it's only one of many things that we're going to try out today. So we're going to have to be moving on. Another thing that disappointed me that didn't work last time was Doom. And in particular, the Simpsons mod. So let's just play that. Oh, well, I don't remember if I got the the music working on this. Or the sound. Well, it's not locking up, so that's good. Yeah, I don't think I did get the sound working on this. As you can see, the Simpsons mod is working. It's not locking up or anything. But that's really not the coolest Doom experience you can get. Z-Doom exists for DOS. And you can play it as if it were a modern first-person shooter. 
WACD, mouse look, crosshair, and uh, all that good stuff. I don't know why the music's still not working. But luckily for you, the music is working in places where it matters most. But we can play Doom anytime. At least we know it's working. Now, something I mentioned but didn't actually carry out was Duke Nukem. And I even got it working with the All 64 card. No crappy DOS MIDI for me. Got the real music. What? Oh. So what you're seeing right here is actually the GOG version of Duke Nukem 3D copied directly into this DOS installation. And it works. And the reason why I have it set up like this is because it already has the mouse look crosshair and everything already set up with WSAD. I have the music turned up much louder than the actual game so that you can hear it. The game is actually set in AW32 mode, not 64. It didn't have that option in the sound setup. So this is supposedly, more or less, the dream experience that everybody hopes to have when they're playing Duke Nukem. The only thing better than this would to have a Roland sound canvas. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those. <laughs> a little bit more clear about what's going on with the sound card in this situation. Now it seems like there's uh, now everybody tries to get the best MIDI possible with Duke Nukem and this is probably as good as it's gonna get on this system but if we test the sound with its current setup with the AW32 as selected music card even though we have an AW64 um, it'll sound like this. Sounds pretty good. However, if I were to change this to Sound Blaster and did it again, leaves much to be desired. Had I not set this up properly or didn't have an AW64 or 32, I guess, this is what we would have been hearing earlier. So let's set it back to AW32. Do it again. Now we get stereo, reverb, and better quality. So, we can go ahead and jump out of this. And we're back to DOS. So now that Rayman, Doom, have redeemed themselves by actually working, there's something else from another video that needs redeeming as well. And that happens to be Quake. I uh, know I just did a video about this on uh, the Mac platform, but we never got to see what it looks like on DOS. Now, it doesn't look as good, I'll admit, but... CD Audio works! Actually, when I first started this up, the CD audio was so loud that it, like... Oh, now it sounds pretty good. I th we should just leave it right like that. God. I'm scared. This music's scaring me. Is 
just remind you guys, this is a this is Ryan DOS, and this video should be in 60 FPS on YouTube. Uh, and the Quake One Macintosh video is also uh, 60 frames per second. So if you want to compare the two in terms of performance, <laughs> be my guess. I gotta say, having auto run enabled really does make the difference in how this is played. I don't know what it is, but playing on DOS I actually like a lot more than when I was playing it on Mac. I don't know why, it's just flowing so much easier and things are looking so much, well, worse, but it's, it's better somehow. Resolution selections are not really that delicious, but then again, neither was, uh, Mac. This feels a lot better. I mean, I don't know what it is. Just it's so much better to play. I like it. PC Master Race, I guess. Damn. So let me readdress something else that we needed to look at uh, before in the last DOS machine video. Uh, we didn't have a line in uh, direct recording of the audio from the machine. So I'm going to play back a demo here so that you can actually experience DOS MIDI, pure DOS MIDI, using I don't know what synthesizer, probably the Sound Blaster 16, whatever. But now you can at least experience it in stereo, if it even uses stereo, but at least you can hear it better. Sounds like when somebody sucks on Guitar Hero. <laughs> that was a hell of an ending. So that is our DOS indulgence, if you will. Next week, expect Windows 3.1 on the ultimate DOS machine.